Aquaba guys, good morning and welcome to another Pillow Talk. Happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. I would like to thank God for allowing us to see another day that we haven't seen before, breathing life into us yet again another day. Well, this Pillow Talk is going to be about a post that I posted on Facebook. And that post said, weak men beat women, weak women stay. Well, that post had gotten a lot of controversy, a lot of angry people, a lot of people who've taken it personally, um, knowing persons, knowing victims. I believe we all know victims. I've known someone who lost her life, her and her children, behind her husband's diabolical ways and selfish ways. And he decided to kill her while she was in her mid to early 30s. I'll never forget that day. It was the 5th of September around 2005. My husband was out of the country at that time, and I was like, oh my goodness, because my father-in-law had passed away. And my husband had flown to be with his father, you know, go to the funeral and all. And I was like, man, my husband's going to be gone a month. I'm going to miss him. The very next day after my husband was gone, or maybe my husband left on the 4th of September. So the very next day. My buddy was murdered. And it was just, I forgot all about my husband. It was the most devastating news. Devastating news because it was like, oh my God, I can't believe. You know, we sang on the choir together. We went to church together. And I was just like, I couldn't believe it. Well, anyway, let's get to the post. I said it. I don't take it back. It is the facts. Someone tried to say, well, I was being judgmental. No, I wasn't being judgmental. I was stating the facts. Well, God tells us not to judge. He tells us not to judge the heart because only he knows the heart. We can judge the actions of our brothers and sisters. And I wasn't being judgmental. I was stating a fact. There is a weakness in men, an insecurity and men and women who decide they want to abuse. But I was talking about weak men beat women, weak women stay. There's a weakness, there's an insecurity. Oftentimes, these young men are not grown up with a male figure. They're grown up under a woman, coddling them, not allowing them to be a man, not allowing them to grow up and let go. Always just keeping them too close. And some of these guys are not growing up. It's not that they're gay. But they're growing up with a lot of petty feminine traits. Because of no male influence. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of females are grown up without their fathers. So they're looking for love in all the wrong places. And that father is supposed to be that female's first love. And he's supposed to tell her how a man is supposed to treat a woman. And when she doesn't have that and she's looking for love in all the wrong places. And if she doesn't like what she see in the mirror, your little lines after a while is going to get to her. Even if she didn't like you initially, but because you're showing her attention, she makes herself like you. And then next thing you know, you guys are in a relationship. Trying to make one another happy. I've seen it close hand. Where the man is so controlling. If a guy needs to see your text. And if a female needs to see what's in your phone. Then they're not trusting you. They don't have no faith in you. They don't believe that you're the person for them. They believe that you're capable of doing other things. Then why are you with them? If a guy can put his hands on you, he is not showing you love. He's only showing you that he is out of control. And if you keep forgiving him, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. 
He needs help. You need help to figure out why do you think that's acceptable? Why do you think that you have to put up with that? You guys both need counseling and you need to part ways. Look, if there's any kids involved, look at how it traumatizes children. If you have little girls, she's going to grow up and think that she's supposed to take abuse. Now, my buddy that was murdered, I don't know how true it is, but from what I was told, her father used to beat on her mother. And so she found a man similar to her father. Because she thought that's what a man's supposed to do. I, I love my daddy. I love my daddy. My daddy's a good man. But my daddy hit my mom. Maybe my mom deserved to be beat. Maybe that's, a, that's the way it's supposed to go. So who am I not to take abuse from my man? I seen my dad do it. For the men. You'll grow up and beat women because you've seen your mother getting beat. Do you all see how this is just damaging? Do you see? If you don't love yourself, how can you convince somebody else to love you? You have to first get healed. You have to get counseling for yourself. You have to ask God, hey, I need you. I need you to come in my life because I'm screwing up on my own. <clears throat> I know you're a God that gives us choices, but right about now, and I don't see no choice. I need you really right now to come into my life because I'm making a mess out of my life. I'm having kids. I'm not married. You know, and I'm not judging women who have kids out of wedlock. I've had kids out of wedlock, and I understand how it is. Well, I had one child out of wedlock, and I seen how difficult it was, and I said, Lord, I ain't doing this no more. You have to give me a husband. This is too much. But not to get off the topic, but, you know, you ought to start making, examining your life and seeing where you're going wrong. you having these kids with these angry, abusive men. They're growing up scared and afraid and insecure. Do you know what that does to a child when they see their mother or being hit or their father hitting them, you're putting insecurity in that child. So now your child is growing up not really caring about themselves, being insecure, and may repeat the pattern. Somebody tried to argue the fact and say, well, that's just my opinion. What's strong about a person who abuses a person? Where's the strength at? A man who has strength he has self-control. If she does or says something that he doesn't like, he has enough strength. Or if he loves her, he enough, let me just walk away and cool off. A woman who loves herself and value herself knows her worth and would not tolerate nor put up with a man who put his hands on her. At all. I know I've always been afraid of angry men. In fact, in the book of Proverbs, it says to take no company with an angry man. So I'm not going to put myself in a place where I know that I'm not going to be safe. I know that I'm going to be nervous all the time, walking on eggshells. Anything I do or say can make him go off. What kind of life is that? What kind of life is that? <laughs> you might be in a situation now where you're afraid... You might be in a situation where you're being abused and you're afraid and you you don't feel you don't have the strength to fight back. There are women abuse shelters out there that will render help, that will help you and your children. There are resources out there. Don't stay in a situation that can cause your life because that is not fair to your child to have to grow up without a mother because you are so insecure and so weak and allowed yourself to get beat. Think of your daughters. Think of your sons that are watching you, that are watching you being disgraced, being humiliated, being abused, being hurt. 
tearing down your self-esteem, tearing down your self-worth. Look at what it's doing to your children. Stop being selfish. Some of y'all stay and put up with it. Oh, it's not that bad because of how somebody is servicing you in the bed. Like sex is just that great that you cannot find somebody that you're sexually compared com, um, um, comparative to. I'm sorry, I, I got that wrong word. Competitive, com, whatever. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. That you cannot find somebody that will marry you, that will love you unconditionally. That can arouse your intellect, spiritually, mentally, sexually. And what is love? What is love? Being beat upside the head. Being yelled at, being called out your name, being controlled, grabbing your phone, not allowing you to do certain things, not allowing you on social media, not allowing you to work. What kind of love is that? If that's love, keep it from me. Keep it from me. I thank God for the man that he placed in my life. No, he ain't no roughneck, and he ain't got to be no roughneck. Yes, excuse the English, the abonics, you say whatever you want to say. But I'm blessed. I can go to bed at night, not worrying about if I'm going to be beat upside my head. I can enter my home, knowing that it's going to be peace. We're going to talk about the events of our day. We're going to laugh. We're going to watch TV. We're going to eat. We're going to pray. God gave me what I saw in my parents. And because I was blessed enough to have a great example. Yes. But for those of you who were not blessed to have a great example. And if you're listening to me under the sound of my voice, that is not love. That is not love. So you guys, be blessed. Know that I love you and that I will fail not to take time out to have our chats. There are times that I may fumble and stumble over some words. Some of you may not know, but it is due to a condition I have called vestibular schwannoma. It's a benign brain tumor. So, guys, know that I love you all. By the way, I will be cooking Coming back up in like September, when it gets to like the fallish months, right about now, it is kind of on the hot side. And Asase Mama is going to take one month break, but the pillow chats will be here. So know that I love you all. Have a great day on purpose. Until we meet again. Bye-bye.